Get the fuck out of here. That was a good hook. Oh my god. Because if you don't peek her, she sort of becomes really... Hi everybody, I'm Samurcam, and this video is going to be my pitch for the Paladins AOC 2022. First, a bit about myself. I've been playing Paladins for about five years now, ever since Shaolin was released. I've played casuals, I've played ranked, I've played some low tier esports, I've been a support main, I've been a tank main, more recently I've been playing a lot more DPS champions. I've streamed on Twitch for about a year now. Uh, I've just been a part of the community for a very, very long time, and I've done a lot in it. For me, the AOC is an exciting opportunity to sort of get more involved with Paladins in a way that I haven't before, and I believe that my experience uh, playing this game and discussing with my friends for for, for so long would be a good addition onto the AOC board. A quick reminder for everybody is that you could vote at paladins.com slash AOC, and I think each person gets about three votes, it's the same as last year, but just make sure to use all your votes and read through all the applicants. The way this video is going to work is first there's going to be a quick uh, I'm a too long didn't watch section, and then I'm going to cover in more depth my answers to the Paladins AOC application questions, some further thoughts not covered by those questions, and lastly some balance and gameplay ideas. In the description there's going to be time stamps as well as a Google document link that, that you can follow along with that also has bonus information I don't cover in this video. If there's anything you guys want to talk to me about, you can reach me on Discord or in the comments or on Twitch or on Twitter. All my information is in the description. One last thing before we get started is I do have a stutter and this is my first AMA scripted video, so I might not be fluent the whole time. Please bear with me on that. To briefly go over the points when making this video, first I'm going to push for making a Paladins Encyclopedia on the AOC. This would help new players answer their questions and help veteran players better discuss things in, in detail because currently a lot of information is lacking. Secondly, I'm going to cover how I care about the fun factor and, and getting rid of frustration in Paladins gameplay, especially by focusing on things like um, champion ability misfires and movement issues. Then I'm going to cover how I want to increase um, transparency from the developers by seeing the development pipeline and trying to get more community content into the game. I'm also going to emphasize that I'm not looking to fix Paladins, I'm looking to improve it, and I think that my um, breadth of experience will help me tackle issues both large and small. After that, I'm going to talk about the tricky issue of Paladins matchmaking and my ideas on how to fix it. I will also talk about how I think Paladins could use more experimentation, uh, similar to how Overwatch has the experimental guard. Lastly, I'm going to discuss champion balance and some ideas I had for existing gameplay systems like the item store. My philosophy while balancing champions is to find their core identity and making sure that the buffs and nerfs don't change what that is. As for the item store, I'm going to focus on some restrictive legacy design choices and how getting rid of them might open up room for, for more fun and, and nuanced gameplay. A quick reminder that there's timestamps in the description as well as a Google document. Please feel free to jump around to the stuff that interests you. I hope you like what you hear and I hope you'll vote me for the AOC next year. And without further ado, let's get into it. So now that I've discussed my general platform, I'm going to explain to you guys in more detail everything that I said. We're going to start with the answers to the AOC questions, the first question of which was, if you could do or change one thing in Paladins to make the game better, what would that be? I read that question in two ways. The first is, if I had one wish, and if I had one, one achievable goal while on the AOC. First, for my wish, I would wish that Paladins had clean, bug-free, refactored code, and that way the devs could focus on giving us more gameplay and content rather than, than bug fixes and optimizations. With the game bug-free, there'd be less, uh, less frustration and much more uh, fun for us as the players. The second way I read that question was as, what, what can I achieve while on the AOC? And I think what I would do is I would push for there to be a more complete Paladins encyclopedia. Right now, I feel like ability descriptions are, are are very much lacking and a lot of game mechanics are unexplained. There is the official wiki online, which is a great resource, but even then it's still incomplete. Having a full encyclopedia would help new players by allowing them to answer their questions and bridge the knowledge gap between new and experienced veterans. And then also it would help the community discuss amongst themselves and with the devs more in detail about balance and theory crafting. For example, there are certain things like a zombie ability descriptions that in-game are just impossible to understand, on the wiki are, are in more depth, but even then still incomplete. Outside things like abilities and items, I think other game mechanics could be included. Things like a champion's gravity constant. For example, Ying falls slower than older champions, but it's not listed anywhere. Also ideas like how big our projectile hitboxes. Can we get a visual presentation of them? All that kind of stuff could all be included in a Paladin encyclopedia, and I think it would help the community greatly. The second question on the application is, if elected, what is the first issue that you would like to address in this position? My first focus would be on game feel. This means both for playing as a champion and playing against a champion. Examples of this are playing as Imani, her Inferno Cannon can miss fire, and her ultimate, if you don't cancel it early, gets the camera stuck for up to 10 seconds. 
This is just not fun to play with. Similarly, Yagarath has really clunky movement around the map and she can get stuck on, on, on straight walls oftentimes and that just feels terrible. On the other end, there are things like playing into Vora where she has many instances of a damage immunity and that can feel very frustrating because she can turn the fight even when she's very, very low. I will go into more depth on Vora in my balance section, so jump to that in the description if you're interested to hear more. I understand that that changes to make the game feel more fun and fluid can have balance implications, but I believe that it's more important to fix the, these, these quality of life issues and then focus on balance after that. Anything can be balanced with stat tweaks, but you shouldn't balance around quality of life issues. Additionally, by reducing frustration in Paladins, it helps keep new players and old players alike, and with more people playing, we'll have better matchmaking. The third question asked is, what excites you the most about being a part of the Assembly of Champions? For me, the most exciting part is getting an inside look at the development process of Paladins from a game design and champion balance perspective. I've personally thought a lot about Paladins, talked about with my friends and my community over the years, and so getting to see it from the inside just seems like a natural progression from what I've been doing already. Additionally, I feel like the dev's vision for the future of the game is sometimes unclear to the community. By making that more clear and increasing that, that transparency, I think we could work to get more community ideas into the game. I think some of the best additions to Paladins have been community contributions, things like avatars and skins, as well as the, the push to, uh, to include limited time game modes. I also think balancing has been much better since the AOC began, and I'd love to be a part of that effort. The last question on the AOC application is, tell us about your Yourself, what are your strengths and why should the community vote for you? I think you should vote for me because I'm trying to improve Paladins, not fix Paladins. Paladins is already a really, really fun game and I completely understand why there's such a passionate community around it. I also have a strong vision for Paladins, especially in, in the balance department and game design department. This motivates me to run and even though I do have the, these uh, strong opinions, I'm open to change because I like to get get my opinions from, from, from a data analysis as well as discussing with experienced players how they feel about the game. To be clear, I'm not only looking for balance ideas from the best players of the game, Game, I think Paladin should be fun for, for all ranks. Lastly, while I am passionate about game design and balance, I also think that, that the Paladin's user experience could be improved. More specifically, in the menuing, things like the social tab are very clunky and could use an overhaul. For the full answers to my questions on the AOC application, you can check the bottom of the Google document. Those are my answers for the AOC questions, but now I want to talk to you guys about two additional topics. Specifically, I want to talk about matchmaking as well as how Paladins could have more experimentation to make the game more fun. I know there are a lot of complaints about matchmaking and it's a very tricky subject because any time that you restrict matchmaking, for example, by making sure that, that a duos play against duos, you lead to worse quality matches. The only real way to make matchmaking better is by including more players in, in the matchmaking pool so that the game can find the, the, the closest match. I personally think casual matchmaking is, is, is okay where it's at right now, although that could be adjusted by making queue times a little bit longer to make the games more fair. I think the real issue right now for matchmaking happens in ranked. There are many fewer players playing ranked in Paladins than, than casuals, and that leads to grossly unbalanced games. We've seen that lengthening queue times helps a little bit, but the core of, of the issue is still there. The only solution to this is to get more people playing ranked by making ranked more fun and more rewarding. I have more thoughts about ranked at, at the bottom of the Google document. I'm not going to cover it more in this video because it would take forever, and it's also a, a question that I'm still trying to find the answer for, but, but I want to let you guys know that I am thinking about it, and I do think it's important to fix it. Moving on to the next topic, I want to talk to you guys about how in Paladins there could be more experimentation to make the game more fun. I don't know if any of you guys remember, I think it was around OB64 era, there was a change to Wrecker made on the PTS so, such that it did more damage to tanks. It was a very wild change, it, it, it led to things like Nessa being able to one-shot Barrack, and it definitely wasn't a good idea, but it was a really cool experiment. I think more experiments like this would be very very valuable for both balance as well as newer game modes and game mechanics for Paladins. It's clear that, that a theory crafting is always limiting, and there's nothing like getting a real experiment done in game. So I think either the uh, PTS could use more of these experiments, or if the developers want to keep that more for bug fixes and stability, I think some of the limited time modes act, act can be changed to some of these experiments. What if we tried making uh, champions move faster? What if we raised health bars across the board? What if we removed cauterize and, and, and tried to balance healing around that? All of these concepts could be tested in limited time modes mixed in with the fun ones that we already have. Another alternative would be to add that into custom games to have an option to toggle experimental balance, uh, sort of like how custom games can currently use use uh, um, test maps. I have some more thoughts about ranked in my Google document, but honestly it, it goes beyond the scope of this video and it's a very complicated issue so I'd have to take more time thinking about it. Now that I've discussed all my other thoughts, I want to talk about balance and gameplay ideas. There's going to be more of this content in the Google document, although be warned, it's going to be a lot less refined. So those ideas, I would still tweak a little more. First, I want to explain how I think about balance. 
What I like to do is figure out a champion's identity both in a gameplay way and as a character way. I think it's very important that characters do not lose their core feel when you change them, unless that core is such a problematic thing for the game that it has to be removed. A quick disclaimer, while I am going to propose a lot of balance changes, I'm not advocating for all of them to go in at once. I think it's important to show the, the different ways I see buffing and nerfing characters, but obviously you'd, I would want to do it in a proportional sense based on how strong or weak they are. These examples are to show you guys how I think about a champion and what kinds of attributes I consider when, when buffing or nerfing them. In this section, I'm going to talk about Inara buffs, then Bora nerfs, and lastly the, the, the item store and its sort of gameplay implications and how we can make it better. Let's start with Inara. Inara is sort of a heal sponge, area control slash area denial kind of champion. Her main tool is her wall, which creates new map geometry and can set traps or sort of uh, um, deny enemy aggression. Her weaknesses are that she struggles to break cauterize and she's fairly immobile, meaning that it's very easy to run away from her. Lastly, she has sort of these bursts of strength when her cooldowns are up, especially Earth and Guard, but then she's weak while it's down. I think Inara's a little weak right now in the meta, and a few buffs could break her more in line with the other tanks. The first change that I would propose is to give her back the 10% bonus healing she had during Earth and Guard. This was mainly nerfed originally because of the strength of, of, of double support after the Cot nerfs, but with Cot being rebuffed a little bit, and the two main culprits of double support, Grover and Furia, being nerfed substantially, I no longer think it's an issue for her to have that extra healing. Additionally, you could give back the 10% damage reduction to a Mother's Grace, but I don't think that's strictly necessary. Giving her that, that healing back would make her more in line with the tankiness of Yag and Azan, but definitely not a, a, as overkill as they are. Another change I'd like to make is to reduce the cooldown of her impasse from 14 seconds to 13 seconds. Inara would be able to trap opponents in more frequently, as well as break cauterize easier. This would bring her cooldown more in line with champions like Beric and Fernando. Another idea is to remove Inara's self-slow during primary fire. This would enable her to more easily get in positions where she can use her, her uh, short-range utility while still being able to take fights. The issue, however, is that it, it, it uh, takes away her uh, weakness of, of being immobile, especially when stacked up with speed buffs. While I do think it's a cool idea, I personally would not push for that change, but I think it's an interesting thing to consider. The last idea I had would be to decrease her ultimate windup time from 2 seconds to 1.75 seconds. Inara's ult is very old, and I think with the buffs to her resilience being made much cheaper over the years, Inara's ultimate feels lackluster from, uh, from a very early on point in the game. Making the windup slightly faster would not make it harder to, to uh, counterplay because you currently have so much time to react, but it would make Inara less vulnerable during the windup still. When it was first introduced in the game, it was very hard to die in two seconds, but nowadays if you don't use your wall or your earthen guard to ult, you'll probably die while it's being wound up. This buff is more of a quality of life change to make her feel a little snappier and more responsive during teamfights. The next thing I want to discuss are nerfs to Vora. I brought her up earlier on in the video when discussing how her many instances of immunity can be frustrating to the player, and I want to dive more more deeply into that topic. But first, let's discuss Vora's identity. Vora is a self-sustaining, ama crippling, and fluid moving flank. Her strengths come from her extreme safety and her constant pressure since she doesn't have to reload. I don't think Vora is too overpowered or anything, so I definitely don't think all these nerfs would have to go through, and I even believe that, that for some of them, oh, we could give her back some strength elsewhere in her kit. The first one I want to discuss is probably the, the strongest nerf I have on this list. The idea would be to, to make it so that Vora no longer builds darkness stacks on non-player entities, like shields and turrets. This would make the uptime on Vora's empowered abilities much lower, which leads to longer gaps between her moments of power when she has her empowered abilities. This would also make her feel a little less safe, because to actually get those stacks, she couldn't just spam her, her left click on a shield, she'd have to actually look to, to hit a player. This would be a big nerf, however, so I would probably push to give her back some power elsewhere in her kit. More specifically, I think Tendril could use a slight range increase and maybe a pull speed increase. This would buff up her double Tendril playstyle, which is a more fun and engaging playstyle after all. Another idea I had to nerf Vora would be to remove the uh, damage immunity on her ult activation. She would still get the normal uh, damage reduction and move speed, however. Also, to be clear, I still think she should have it while she actually executes the scythe swing on somebody, uh, just when you first press the button for, for the ultimate. This change would, would reduce player frustration and trying to kill an already hard to kill flanker while still enabling her to get the execute off if she connects the ult. Her ultimate right now feels a little bit like old Guillotine Zin who was able to turn around a fight with the damage immunity even at 1 HP. The last idea I had would be to slightly nerf her self-sustain. I still think it's important for her to feel very sustainy, but I want to bring her more in line with champions like Buck. I propose that we change her Sharpened Resolve card to go from consuming stacks heals you for initial 10 HP each level to 8 HP each level. And additionally, I think her a broken path card for Siphon could uh, could increase healing by 50 each level to 40 each level. With these changes, a sustained focused Vora would feel about the same late game, but her early game would be a little bit weaker. It also wouldn't affect her base kit for people that aren't running those cards to, uh, to be extra sustaining. 
A quick little bonus I wanted to add into this section is talking about champion reworks, specifically Torvald. Torvald has been a problem grandpa for quite a while in Paladins, and I think that one of the issues with Torvald is that his identity sort of relies on, on pocketing his teammates, and I think that that mechanic is inherently a problem in Paladins. So rather than focusing on Torvald's gameplay identity, we should focus on his character identity when, when thinking about balancing and or reworking him. I think it's very cool that there's a tank who can support his team as well. To that end, one crazy idea I've had for Torvald for a long time is what if he could make a trampoline for his teammates to, to jump onto to get onto high ground. This would still help him support his team, but it would get, get rid of some of the annoying aspects of pocketing flanks. This would maintain his supportive playstyle, but it would get rid of some of the frustration players feel playing into pocketed DPS champions. There are obviously other ways to, to, uh, to uh, rework Torvald, I just personally have always wanted to see a trampoline at Paladins. If you want to see more of my balance ideas, there's some extra stuff in the Google document, just uh, um, uh, please keep in mind that those ideas are uh, less refined and probably need a bit more work before I would actually be, be uh, confident at giving that feedback to Hi-Rez. I want to take some time now to discuss the item store. The item store is a very interesting part of Paladins, as it provides tools for the player to counter otherwise oppressive playstyles. It also adds a sense of progression to the game from early, middle, to late, as certain champions get weaker, mainly tanks and supports, and others get stronger, mainly damages and flanks. As time goes on, the game becomes a little bit less, less focused on cooldowns and a little bit more focused on, on traditional FPS skills. I personally really like how this affects the game, and I wouldn't want to change that. I'm going to go over an idea I had for an item, as well as some changes I thought that could be made to the actual format of the item store. But first, let's talk about my item idea. I think it'd be cool to have an item called Armor Pierce, which would serve as a counter to damage reduction, which currently has no counter. This item would work that the damage you deal would pierce through DR by 25% scaling. The thought behind this item is to counter some of the more oppressive damage reduction champions. It would definitely be a late game item as things like Cauterize, Wrecker, and, and Resilience are definitely way more important. This item definitely targets tanks as they have more damage reduction than, than most champions, but it also affects a lot of the flanks that, that have playstyles revolving around it too. And to be clear, this item would never lead to you dealing more damage than your normal primary fire. This would also help, help differentiate Veteran from, from, from Haven a little more than it already is, because right now Veteran has a bit of a counter and running percent HP damage champions, whereas Haven doesn't have a counter. By introducing Armor Pierce, there might be more cases where it's worth taking Veteran because right now Haven is just a straight upgrade in most cases. I'm also not fully confident on the exact scaling. Maybe 20% scaling is better. I just wanted to throw the idea out there. I don't just have ideas for items that, that could be added to the store, I also think some items could, could be removed. The main culprit of this is Guardian. In its current state, Guardian is way, very expensive for a very small benefit, and it's a terrible, terrible item. However, to buff Guardian into usability would encourage us just on, on a shooting shields all game, and nobody wants to do that. So I think Guardian has no place in Paladins. One last quality of life change I want to mention before I get into some more funky ideas is I think that the window for reselling items should be until you've left spawn, not just after closing out of the item store. I know many players accidentally misclick an item and then immediately close out of the item store because of muscle memory. This leads to them having items that they didn't want. If we had until we left spawn, it'd be much easier to, to um, refund those items and buy the ones that we truly needed. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Does the item store have to have 16 items? Do there have to be four items per category? Should players only be allowed to buy four items? Should items only have three tiers? Why not five? Right now, the item store has a lot of old design relics that stem from when Paladins was a much different game. If we remove these old restrictions, it could lead to us having more customization for each game of Paladins we play. I, for one, would not mind an item that let us jump higher, maybe an item that gave our mounts more health so that we could get shot more than once before we have to get knocked off our horse. I even wouldn't mind buying Nimble 5 on, on Inara so I could go fast. I'm not entirely sure what other changes can be made to the item store, but I do think that, that, that getting rid of, of all these legacy ideas could really unlock it in a new way, and that either would lead to fresh gameplay for all of us. I'm not sure what other changes could be made or other items added, but I do know that, that this change would lead to more fun games for all of us. Outside of the item store, there are some other things that, that feel very locked in place. For example, what if damage fall off across the board was, was increased so that damage at range was less? Or what if health bars were increased on every single champion? This would raise the uh, time to kill and make the game feel a little more like it used to. I hope the ideas I presented helped you guys understand how I think about champion design and, and, and game balance. I also wanted to illustrate some of the creative ways how we could shake up the, the, the Paladin's experience to make it more fun for all of us. That wraps up all the stuff I wanted to talk to you guys about in this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you, you'll, you'll give me your vote for the AOC. Please share this video if you liked what you heard with other people who are still thinking about who they want to vote for, and get the message out. It would help me immensely. Again, feel free to reach out to me in the comments, on Discord, in my stream, etc. All my uh, socials are in the description for you to reach out to me. I want to give a big thank you to AlexFoot626 for editing this video and just helping me with the whole process. He's, he's been a godsend. Additionally, I want to thank my, my community for pushing me to actually run for the AOC. 
I have been thinking about it for a few years, but never really put in the full effort, and I'm really glad that I did. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next year on the AOC.